Hello! So this evening we are going to have a look at Navigraph Charts version 8 that was released today. Um, it's a huge upgrade, there's quite a lot to cover so we're going to go bit by bit and look around it just from the basics and how it works, where things are and just how to basically plan a flight and see some of the functionality within it. So you can use the mouse wheel to zoom in and out, in and out on the chart. So if we go and zoom in to where my aeroplane is, you can see the little blue icon. I've got the simulator running in the background, which is why the blue indicator is showing up for the aeroplane. So if we keep zooming in, you will see the first immediate difference over older versions of Navigraph. They now have, the airfields now have the runway and taxi layouts and the parking all drawn in, which becomes really, really useful. For, you know, if you're taxiing around a complex airport, you can find the indications for the taxiways very easily. OK, so let's go and have a look at this new interface, which is quite a lot different than it was previously. At the top, you've got search on the top left. Then you've got flights. Then you've got airports. And then you've got pin boards. So if you go and click on search, it slides in from the left. And you can see I can search for EGSS, which I had done previously to find the airfield while I was playing with this earlier. So if we just clear that away, obviously that's the, how you would see it if you haven't searched for something. So we search for EGSS and if we click on it, it opens the airport here. So you get a second dialogue for anything that you have asked for information about. Always appears at the bottom left. So you can open that airport. Yeah. So if we click on Open Airport, that gives us the whole of the left margin full of information about Stansted. So you've got basic airport information. So you can go to General and you can see the codes and elevations, that kind of thing. You can see information on the runways. And this is really cool. You can see the, um, uh, what's the word, the vectors of the wind in relation to the runway direction. So if you were using runway 22, you've got a 14 knot headwind and a three knot crosswind, for example. If you go and click on information on that, it will give you information on the runway itself. So we can look at weather. So it gives you Meta now directly inside the application, which is fantastic. You can also get a TAF readout. So all of the cloud layers, which is really cool. We can also get all the com frequencies for the airfield. We can see all of the charts for the standard approach routes, for the approaches, the taxiways, the SIDs, and any reference information. So if we were taxiing around, for example, we, we might want to see the, the basic diagram of the airfield. And in common with older versions of Navigraph, we can click the icon here with the, the layers to show it on our route. And again, we can pin it. So this really plays into the other new function, which is these pin boards. If we go and pin this, we can create a pin board. So we can say this is our test, oops, test pin board and create it. So this is actually a named pin board. So we can have multiple pin boards. Yeah. So you could have, for a, if you were organising an event, for example, you could get all of the, the charts you're going to need to run your event and keep them in a named pin board just for that event, which would be quite cool. OK, so in common with older versions, yes, you can show the chart or your, your paper. Um, oh, the words are not coming to me this evening. The plate. You can see the plate oh, superimposed over the chart and you can choose the alpha transparency of that plate. It's not very obvious here that there is anything behind it, but you can see that airway behind is becoming more visible if we make this more see-through. OK, so we can unpin things as well and we can um, choose not to show this at all. Uh, if we go and click the X that's interesting. Look, it hasn't gone away. Is that? Oh, no, sorry. This is a change. Where you would have just highlighted this or unhighlighted it to make it appear or disappear, we now get an extra dialogue up here. And when we close that, the chart goes away. That's a change. OK, so let's go and plan a basic route and then we can look at some of the other toys once we've done it. So we're going to zoom out. So you can see we're, we're down here. We'll go back 
and hide this dialog. So we're back where we kind of started. Let's go to the flights section and make a new flight. So we give a flight a name. We'll say this is our test flight. And I think this is a massive improvement over the old way Navigraph worked. So they've really tidied up the way this works. So to fill out a new flight, you basically work your way down the left hand side, filling in the things that aren't filled in yet. So we can choose whether it's an IFR or a VFR flight. Now this is the huge new functionality in Navigraph and we'll get back to it. We'll just program an IFR flight to begin with. So chart mode, you can have standard or commercial aviation overlay, or CAO. So that means it's going to get the Jeppesen drawing methods that suit commercial traffic versus any other traffic. So you can choose how the chart is going to behave. So say we were going to do a commercial route and we're going to fly at 36,000 feet and we're going to go from and we can either pick a, a recent airfield we've used or we can search. So if we see EGSS becomes our departure, so add that to our route so we can see it's highlighted now down here and it's drawn in on the origin now. And we can see there are two runways available and 14 departures available. So we can click on select runway and we can see those vectors again, which is very cool for the wind on the runways. So we'll choose add to route on runway 22. So now we can choose a departure. So if we go to select a departure, it will draw all of them on the map. I think that's fantastic. And they're all labeled so you know which one's which. So then you could say, oh, actually, so we want to do maybe the Utava or maybe BKY5R looks better, actually, because we're going to go north. So let's go add route. So that becomes the only one drawn now, and it's actually part of our route. OK, so we are going to, and we haven't chosen anyway yet, so let's go and select our, our destination. Let's go and put in EGPH for Edinburgh and add that to our route. OK, so it's got a dotted line, meaning it's just vectors, basically, to get there at the moment. We haven't chosen any procedures. So runways available. Let's go and select. So looking at the wind, the one with the headwind is runway 24. So we'll add that to our route. Arrivals available or approaches available. Let's go and look at arrivals first. How do we want to come in? So notice this is now showing us all of the various ways of coming into Edinburgh from above and below actually. So say we wanted to come in on the AGPED AGPE one e So there's AGPED. So we come oh sorry, AGPE one e So let's go to add that to the route. So we are now coming in via AGPED and getting this close to the airfield. So the, the final part we need really is an approach. So let's go and choose our approach. We'll use the, from the AGPE one e we can go either way, actually. Look, we could, we want to use ILS for runway 24, don't we? So let's do this one. So let's have a look at that one. Or that one, what does that one look like? So you can have a look at each one to, to see how it looks. We want to go for the Romy 24 though, don't we? So let's go and add this in, add that to our route. Okay. And we can add an alternate as well. So if we want to do an alternate over to, I don't know, um, Prestwick or somewhere, we could, but we're not going to. We'll just leave that for the moment. So that's basic. the basics of our flight plan are done. Obviously, we can play games with looking at Edinburgh and pulling up charts. Now, in the past with Navigraph, you'd have had to go and pin all the charts you wanted along the way. Look at the bottom of the screen. Everything we've chosen, it's gone and got the relevant charts to show us completely automatically. I didn't choose any of those. So it's got the airport diagram for Stansted. It's got the departure. It's got the, you know, the wider the view coming into Edinburgh. It's then got the ILS diagram and the localizer. And yeah, it's got everything we could possibly want. And it's already pinned them. 
this is where the new pinboard functionality really comes into its own. So remember, at the moment this is saying sync with current flight. If we unsync, then obviously it will stop doing that. But we can do a save as on this pinboard. And we can call this the um, EGSS to EGPH pinboard. And we can create it and it becomes available. So if we want to pull, pull up these pins, we can just select that pinboard. Yeah? So that's how you do a flight. So that was the flight icon I just clicked on. And that's where you fill in the details of your flight. If we want to close that diagram, we can just do that. And we're back here. So this looks very busy, doesn't it, on the map at the moment. We can open up the, um, the little uh, abacus icon here. And it shows you all of the options. Now notice there's a button at the bottom saying reset to IFR high default which that is the default it's in at the moment. But you can switch off entire chunks of chart that you're maybe not interested in. Or you could select, you know, particular bits you don't want drawn to make it less messy for yourself. Obviously, it's still going to draw all the bits that you're actually passing through. Yeah. So let's go and reset that back to as we had it. Something we haven't done is figure out the route in between. So let's say auto route. I mean, we could do it by hand and we could spend ages looking at the airways, figuring out what altitudes and all that kind of thing. Or we can just go and click auto route and it will do it for us. Yeah. So at the destination, you can say auto route to get us there, please. And this, this will override everything we've chosen. So airway type, we say low or high. So we'll say high and create and see it's rechosen the standard instrument departure and the approach route and figured it all out. Well, it hasn't actually put a, um, a star in because in the real world you wouldn't. Yeah, you would contact the destination airfield and they would give you your your final details because, you know, the wind may have changed by the time you get there. Anyway, so there you go. We can program routes and we can play all these games with looking at the chart and we can see all of this wonderful information <laughs> and they've completely redesigned the way this works which I don't think I think it takes a little while to get used to it but it's not too bad you'll notice there's an airplane icon um, in here underneath the abacus icon if you click on it you can switch on moving maps off or on if you put moving maps on it will stay centered on your airplane you've got um, follow mode as well so it's going to keep track with you the whole time you've got map orientation north so this is north mode if we put it in track mode aer the airplane is always traveling up the screen yeah so if we put it back to north mode then the airplane changes direction itself and flies around so it's completely up to you it's actually quite handy if you're taxiing around to have it in track mode so you can and notice the letters all rotate so they're always the same way up so you haven't got to crane your neck around to be able to read things Okay, so we've looked at how to program a flight then. You'll notice across the top are the, the various parts of your flight and you'll have lots of waypoints that have been added in along the airways. So there's this airway here, look, L613, which goes via Mowgli and Betax and Mammal and Halif. And you can see all of those across here, Mowgli, Betax, Mammal, Halif. Watch this though. If we click the pen on the far right, it's a much shorter route description. So all it said here is you go via Stoat, or from Stoat, sorry, via L613 to Halif. So all of those intermediate waypoints are contained inside that airway. So if you're wanting to program this into your plane, you're better off using the text description than looking at any of those waypoints, if you're gonna, if you're gonna go that way. By the same token, you know, you could have fetched it from Simbrief, Simbrief anyway, and we'll, we'll get to that. So if we unload this route that we've been playing with, we can import a flight. And when we import, we can import a, one we've saved from a file, or we can import from Simbrief. Yeah, so that's how you can do that. So you could plan your flight on Simbrief, then come in here and just import it, and everything will be pre-filled, you know, as you would imagine it should be. Or you can just 
load up a previous flight, the one we've just been messing around with. But yeah, so if you if you do like programming the FMC on things like the Boeings or the Airbuses, if you get the text version of this, that makes a lot more sense because you can then um, fill in the route before you get to meddling with the legs. So you could say, I'm going to take, you know, um, Airway 613 over to Halif, then UN 590 over to Abevi. And it doesn't take very long at all to program it by hand. OK, so the next thing down is the airports. So this is, again, just basically a reference book of being able to look at the airports. So quite independently of the route, you can go and look up airports. So let's go and get rid of that route for the moment. So we'll unload our route. So we've got nothing on the map. The airports really comes into its own if you're flying VFR. So we can go and search for, say, EGTB, which would be Booker or Wickham Air Park. And if we click on it, it pops open the airport information. And we can open the airport and we can see everything about it, and we can go to the charts, and there are no charts available. But this is where the new version of this application really comes into its own. So, it does still gives us the information on the runways, and the weather, and the comms, and uh, obviously there are no procedures. This is a small airfield, and I've come here on purpose because this is where the new version of Navigraph really comes into its own. So although it won't bring us straight to the airfield on the search, we can go and find it. So here's Heathrow, there's Bovingdon, and Wickham Air Park is here, look. Now watch what happens when we zoom in. So we get the layout, and that's all well and good. But then you've got this new toy. If you click on the IFR high, there's this new icon that was never here before, a VFR. And look, we've suddenly got the traffic patterns for the smaller airfields. Yeah, and for congested airspace, you've also got the traffic routes through the more difficult airspace. And they're all in, you know, they've been penciled in for us. Isn't that fantastic? So if you are following a visual route, you've also got all the sectors showing up. And again, the same way we saw earlier, you can switch on and off the airspaces, so you can do, you know, at the drop of a, a hat, you can choose what you want to see. So you want, you might just want to see the VFR airspaces. Yeah. So if we reset to VFR default, it all comes back on. So you're very much seeing the sectional maps. Obviously, it's going to work for anywhere in the world like this. So if we went to, say, KSFO and go over to San Francisco, it will fly across the map for us which I think is quite cool. <laughs> um, let's go north of the bay up to Santa Rosa. And so you can see here we've got an airfield. It hasn't got actually a traffic pattern for that one. It's, but it has got, if you zoom to the right direction, you can see the rows there around it, which is quite cool. If we come back down to some of the other airfields along the way, yeah, they're bigger airfields, so they're not going to be expected to have traffic patterns. But this is very much a sectional chart of the US, isn't it? It's very cool. So you've got Salinas down here, for example. So if we zoom in on it. Yeah, it's a bit spotty on some of the airfields, you know, ones that have got or haven't or have have or haven't got the information. But it's still a huge leap over what we had before. So if we go back to uh, Booker, for example, and the the result of your search gets a pin on the map, so you get it becomes very easy to find out what you're looking for. Um, but yeah, so the the VFR functionality I think is very very good. Obviously, if you go somewhere hilly, so let's go and look for somewhere like Lowy, you'll see the the advantage of having the relief maps. So these are really very very good when you zoom in. You get you. Prob this probably isn't going to show up very well on the resolution that YouTube runs at because this is on a 4K monitor. But I'm actually getting the contour line heights on the hills in feet, which is fantastic. And I'm also getting peak heights in feet. Yeah, obviously it's got the sectors and stuff drawn in. And you can see here the various exit routes for VFR flights are all drawn in. 
It's very, very clever. And it's, you know, a league, leagues away from whatever it had in the past. You can see here there's all sorts of various routes through the hills that you're supposed to take. Very, very cool. Salzburg has obviously got some very defined traffic patterns. It's got a long pattern. <laughs> so yeah, um, Navigraph Charts 8, it's a massive, massive step up in terms of being able to plan flights, not just for IFR now, but for VFR as well, and having lots and lots of information. And obviously this can get far too busy, so you can switch off bits and pieces that you don't want. And if you do mess it up, you can just reset it and it will go back to its standard rendering. Okay. Oh, one of the things, did I cover being able to... Let's go back to an IFR plan. So let's go to Munich. Oh, it's forgotten who I am. I think there's a few bugs in this still, because this has done this a few times. It's signed me out a few times. And it's, yeah, it's a little bit buggy by the look of it. But this is day one. This is 8.0. So let's go look back in on an airfield. So we'll go for Stansted just out of ex as an example. I just wanted to illustrate to you a bit more about those charts that we saw earlier. So if we open the charts for this airfield and we look at that uh, BKY routing. Yeah, here we go. So you get the alpha level, it's much more obvious now looking here, look. So when you superimpose with the with the page icon or layer icon a chart over the map, it's you can choose the alpha level. Yeah, or you can choose to just see the chart. Or you can come back and close that and it will go back to there. If you want to get rid of it completely, you have to close the, the little dialogue at the top right and it will make that disappear. Okay, so that's everything about, or most things, about the, the new version of Navigraph 8 within, the, within the, the charts application. If you look inside the aeroplane, the story isn't quite so nice. If we go and resume, within the aeroplane, this is still going to be very much as it was before. If you look in a tablet in any of the aeroplanes, you're going to see the integration that's been built by the developer, basically. That will still pull the charts up. But it's um, very much, you know, it just pulls up the charts and you can pin them, or star them, sorry, and look in your saved charts to see, you know, the ones that you've saved in the past. Um, within the simulator, the Navigraph charts add-on in here appears to still be the old one. Oops, I didn't give it enough time there, did I? Give it a chance. So this is still the old version. Yeah, it's sharing data with what we were doing but it's still the old version, so we can obviously zoom in. We can't zoom in all the way down to the airfield though. So this is still kind of version 7 inside the sim, but it still works, so it's still good. And we can obviously, we can change our options in here. But I just wanted to make you aware of that. I'm not sure if they're going to fix that, so this will be using the same as the main application, but at the moment it would seem that if you have two screens that would be the better way to do it to have Navigraph charts running on a second screen so you get all the new toys and then obviously you could drag it over and use it especially if you're using it for taxiing yeah so if you're going to zoom in and north or aircraft orient it this for taxiing around an, un you know, an unfamiliar airfield that's going to be really useful to have on a second screen Okay, so I think that's probably all we wanted to cover today. Um, but yeah, Navigraph version 8, or Navigraph Charts version 8, go have a look at it. It's very, very good. You can see I've just accidentally shut it down. Let's, it loads pretty quickly. And obviously we can pull up our existing flight really quickly as well. So it's, I'm always amazed at how fast the rendering is in Navigraph. It's very fast at drawing things. Okay, so I'm going to leave it there for today, and hopefully you enjoyed that. Hopefully that explains some of the differences, and we'll come back and do some flights with it over the coming days and weeks. 
Kate, I'll see you soon.